Switzerland, a country known for their jaw-dropping scenery, state-of-the-art watches, and chocolate. But what if I were to tell you that there's something else hidden in the heart of Switzerland in a city named Lausanne? Because in Lausanne, there lay a startup, a startup called Serial, developing technology for the future, a technology called Lightfield. You see, Serial was founded back in 2017, and ever since then, they have been working hard developing the technology of Lightfield. Now, many of you might be asking yourself, what is Lightfield, and why is it such a big deal? Well, now would be the perfect time for me to explain that to you. As you probably know, our current displays in VR headsets are pretty standard. We see these on a daily basis, using technologies such as LCD or OLED, now slowly inching towards the technology of Micro OLED. These technologies are great and all, but there's one big issue with all of them. With prolonged use, they can cause eye strain. Even if you don't notice it or feel it, what, or more specifically how, you see the current view in VR isn't exactly a one-is-to-one -one representation of how we see the real world. The light doesn't have the true optical depth as it does here, IRL. When you see in the real world, all these little things go into making your experience. Things that you might not exactly even realize are happening, but they are what makes your experience quote-unquote real. It's kind of like good haptics, you know? You don't exactly notice them when they're there, but you're kind of missing something when they're not. And when they are there, and they're good, they make your experience that much more real, that much more personal, it makes it feel complete. I'm sure you notice that when objects are closer to your eyes in the real world, the background blurs. Usually, this is what we would call the bokeh effect in pictures. Like, you know, for example, when you try to take that perfect Starbucks coffee picture with nice bokeh in the background. No? Anyone? <laughs> Well, I'm not sure if you've noticed, but this doesn't actually happen in VR. Everything is projected on one plane, therefore everything is always in focus. Not very natural, is it? Lightfield, as Serial puts it, is the genuine representation of how light exists in the real world, basically recreating this exact effect in both AR and VR. Now, I'm calling it an effect, but it's not exactly an effect, as it's not done through software. It's not just something you can go ahead and install. It's not even done through eye tracking. It is proprietary hardware that perfectly recreates the way we see light in the real world. I have been excited for light field technology ever since I've heard about it. The implications here are absolutely massive, not just for VR, however, but also for AR, and especially for AR. Because imagine wearing AR glasses and focusing in on your hand, having a point of reference, knowing how the background should blur, and all of a sudden the text written next to it isn't reacting in the same way, or whatever is projecting behind your hand isn't blurring with the rest of the background, really takes you out of the immersion and makes things not seem correct. So now, with that explanation out of the way, let me take you guys on a little trip with me. A trip to Lausanne, Switzerland. However, just before we begin this journey, I would like to formally apologize here in this video to Serial for it taking me this long to make this video happen. This was filmed back in late November, which means it's taken me about three months to make this video happen, which is an absurd amount of time. So I'm just here, I want to formally apologize in this video, and with that being said, let me show you guys around. My first day in the offices started off with meeting the team, hanging out with them for a bit, having some coffee, and then I was dropped straight into the technology. The first one I tried was the AR headset. This was absolutely mind-blowing. And you guys might ask me, is it actually as good as they make it out to be? Yes. Yes, it is. It's very important to mention that this is a prototype. This is not the finished product, and this will greatly improve. But even then, me sticking out my hand and seeing a dragon land on it, me being able to focus in on that dragon and having the background blur was absolutely incredible. This is, by the way, one of the demos they threw me into. But one demo that definitely stuck with me, even until today, is the demo of the bird. There was a bird that started off really far away, and when I lifted up my finger, the bird came up to me and landed on that finger. I was able to focus in on that bird and my finger, and the background would blur. Not only the real world background, but also the holograms projected in the background. It was real. It made it seem like those holograms belonged there, and it's not something I had experienced before, because again, it doesn't happen in VR. Of course, there were a ton of demos I could try out. With leap motion hand tracking, I was able to interact with them as well. With the demo of a virus, which was incredibly detailed, and again, I could focus in on it, rotate it, and have the background blur with it. It's essentially an exact representation of what I would see in the real world if that virus was actually there. Of course, that being absolutely absolutely impossible because they're not that big. Now, once again, I do feel the need to mention the looks here are all 
prototypes. These are not final products. And in fact, Serial showed me this epic progression table of theirs, showing me exactly how they progressed from their very first prototype, which was essentially a box to what they have now to what they would like to have in the future, which is essentially something that looks exactly like glasses. Super thin, super sleek, and just something you could wear out in public and have that AR blend in with the real world exactly how it should. It was really cool. They showed me their lab with 3D printers printing out those prototypes. And overall, let me get some pretty sick B-roll. After the AR demo, of course, I got to hop in to the VR demo, which had a few issues at the beginning, but hey, they're prototypes. And this is part of the fun. Most of the issues actually really surprised me. They were to do with how large the cable was. Imagine that. The cable was so large and so heavy. Of course, this is not something that is going to exist when you guys get to see the technology, but it's just something cool I got to see behind the scenes, and I thought you might be interested. With that being solved, Wow, I got thrown into a starship demo where I again had hands, but I was able to go up close and focus in on all the little knobs, all the little gears in front of me on the dashboard. All the screens, everything was just crisp, sharp and focused. And when I picked up my hand and held it up in front of me, I was able to focus on that and have all that dashboard blur out just like it would IRL. It was absolutely fantastic, but there was something else added to it. Something really weird that you'll hear later on in the interview. I could see this was without my glasses, completely without my glasses, and everything was sharp and in focus. Now, the headset did have the light field display in the center and a standard LCD display around the rest. Think kind of like the Vario headset that had the super sharp crisp display in the center and then a lower resolution display on the outside. They did manage to calibrate it and align it really well. Going back to the point, I could see without my prescription. I know it's really hard for you to imagine this. With me just telling you what it looks like, it really doesn't show you much but I think I have an experiment that can help you understand. Lift up your finger, focus in on it. You see the background blur. As you move it away, the background blurs less. As you move it closer to your eyes, the background begins to blur more, until you're at a certain point where your eyes can't really converge anymore and uh, it starts kind of hurting. <laughs> but this is exactly the effect you're looking for. Now, before I ended up going to Serial, I know you guys were super interested in this technology, so I asked you guys to post up all your questions that you might have and I would get them answered. So, we did an interview. We did an interview IRL. This was my first interview IRL. I'm sorry if I was kind of awkward, but before I show you that, they did also answer your number one most important question, which I didn't understand at the beginning, but afterwards it became quite clear. What was their favorite cereal? Yes, they answered that. You have your answer. Okay, let's move on to the proper questions. I sat down with CEO of cereal, Thomas, and we got some of your questions answered. Now, this is gonna be the full interview because the full interview turns out to be like half an hour long or something. So I'm going to post a separate video with the full interview, but here's a glimpse of it. Do you wanna introduce yourself first? Hi, I'm Thomas. I'm one of the co-founders and now CEO of C Real. We make a new type of display which would make virtual reality and augmented reality more natural for our vision. People are very interested in like when it does go mainstream, how stressful will it be on their computers? How, will they need more powerful computers to run it? And of course, I already know they won't because you showed it to me, but can you explain a little bit more on that? Yeah, yeah, thanks for answering <laughs> the question <laughs> shortly. <laughs> but it's a very important question because even professionals in industry have this misconception that light field necessarily, unavoidably, means just enormous amount of data and computation. And it's true for some cases, like big light field panels. But in our case, we project practically all information to the eyes. And at the end, it means that we don't need more of anything compared to just flat images. So the straightforward answer is, it's the same, or a few percent more, just because it's a little bit different, yeah, but yeah. You know, essentially the same. But of course, as I know, you showed it to me and it worked perfectly fine. So, so you are the proof of that. Yeah, I am, I am the proof. <laughs> there was a question asked quite a lot in kind of the easiest way possible. What is light field technology? Well, okay, first thing is that light field is basically uh, terms from physics describing how the light is present in the reality. So light field is actually the light around us. And we do the light field artificially. So a little bit, it's a little bit also engineering term. But what it means that the image which we create is basically a genuine representation of how light exists in the real world. I, I borrowed this phrase from Road to VR. <laughs> <laughs> but it tells it all. Really, we don't just create image on the flat screen and that's surprisingly difficult to explain to people that default is three-dimensional yeah, world, yeah. three-dimensional 
light or coming uh, through three-dimensional objects and moving through 3D world. So the light field is really light, how it is behaving in the reality. And how we do it technically is probably a little bit different question, but we try to simply reproduce the light in the same way, but only the portion which enters the eye. So we don't calculate and shine outside, but only to the eyes. That's then a reference to the first question. That's why it is so efficient. Another question that was asked a lot, because a lot of glasses wearers and people with prescriptions wear VR headsets, etc. And they want to know how that will affect it, whether they will be able to even use it. Let's say they have a stigmatism. Well, I will return back to the previous answer that because we can form the light field or create the light field, we can also transform the light field in basically any way we, we need. So if you don't have a glasses, we just reproduce the light for you without any correction. Yeah. But if you use glasses, we can actually encode the same transformation into that digital information. So they basically digitally, the light field can integrate digitally the, 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 your glasses in it, so including astigmatism. Yeah. So in like the future, we could have a slider to select your prescription and the software would adjust for that. Yeah, or even better, there will be some exercise. You will answer some questions, what looks better, what looks worse. And during that process, we will actually know your prescription and maybe better yeah. than today from <laughs> opticians because there it is a very big guesswork. After that, I even got the pleasure of checking out how a hologram was made. But honestly, right now, I couldn't explain it to you and I couldn't do it justice. All I can tell you is that it was really, really cool. And it was done in like, an entirely black room and it had all these intricate details that needed to be just right and it was something that I would call in technology terms beautiful. Overall it was an absolutely incredible experience being able to see the technology of the future as I am most certain that is exactly what it is going to become. We're going to need it. It's a natural progression. We need to be able to see things the way they are supposed to be seen if we are to get immersed. Eye strain and realism in VR can become a really big problem and it's something that definitely needs to be overcome. And that will not exactly be possible with Without realistic light emulation. Slapping a magnifying lens onto your face and calling it a day can only get you so far. This is the technology of the future and I am so unbelievably excited to be able to share it with you guys. I want to congratulate Serial on their incredible work and innovation so far. They have been nothing short of absolutely incredible and I want to thank them once again for letting me come over and check out their incredible technology and apologize once again for taking me this long. They even organized a really cool event where we got to go into a museum of like artificially created art. It was some of the coolest stuff I've ever seen, and we got to talk to an AI. She wanted to date me. Sure. This was all done at the <laughs> BFL campus, and it was a ton of fun. I would also like to give them a huge shout out for letting me try out their Microsoft HoloLens, which they let me check out as kind of a comparison of what it looks like without having the background blur. And of course, it was a big difference. They even got me to go around their offices and hunt for different holograms. But I would like to confirm it's not as cool as their light field technology. So that is where I'm going to end today's video. It was certainly a different kind of video, but I am so happy to finally be getting this out to you guys. So thank you all so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. If you did, please leave a like. If you guys disliked it, I guess this button works too, but please tell me why down in the comment section below. If you guys are not yet part of our community, check out our Discord down below and check out our Reddit where I want to see you posting your spicy memes. And of course, you know, join, have a chat, tag me if you want. You know, I'm always available. Thank you so much to the Patreons supporting this channel. You guys help me pay my bills, pay my little subscriptions here and there, and overall make these videos better so thank you so much and as usual in case you guys want to be notified about future content coming up on the channel daily make sure to smack the subscribe button with your forehead ding my bell and see you again in my next